friends and welcome to Sermon Link. Thanks so much for joining me. My name is Pastor Katja Broadbeck. I'm Associate Pastor at Holly Nett Methodist Church and um, we're thankful that you're watching and um, the passage that we will be looking at for uh, this week, it comes actually from the Old Testament, from the book of Exodus. Um, and before I actually read the passage, I just want to talk a little bit about the context, where this passage uh, comes um, within. And um, kind of one of those really hard um, and messy passages in the book of Exodus. So we know that the Israelites are in the desert, right? They're wondering. Um, they're reliant or learning to rely on God with meat and water and food. Um, and now Moses was taken up to the mountain kind of to actually receive the law that remember the tablets with 10 commandments. Um, and so Moses was pretty kind of, um, it, it was taking him a, some time <laughs> to talk with God to receive the commandments. And so what happened is, um, is the Israelites actually were be just kind of became impatient. They say, hey, Moses doesn't care about us, um, so he's not coming back. So what we're going to do, actually, let's create our own God. God. And we know the, the story how they created the golden calf. And um, there is just some messy things that happen after that. Moses came back. He was angry when he found out what happened. The tablets that he was bringing, you know, with the written law of God uh, was broken. He broke it. Then uh, even uh, kind of a more horrible thing happened. And uh, Moses divided up the camp and said, you know, one go to my side and the Lord's side and the others go to the other side. And they divided. And then uh, those who were on his side actually killed those who won the other side. Um, and it is after, like, in the midst of this mess, in the midst of this horrific events and just the turmoil and chaos, um, that Moses comes back to God again and he goes into the mountain um, and he talks to God and he's asking God for assurance. He's asking God that God will go with them, will continue to go with them because obviously God is really, really upset with the Israelites. Um, but Moses um, has a way and kind of, he, Moses has a relationship with God where he talks to God, actually it says here in the text that he talks to God like a friend or like a neighbor. Um, and so, in a way, um, kind of he negotiates with God um, that God would continue to go with them um, even after they sinned so horribly. Um, and then Moses asks one more, um, one more thing from God. And so here, that's that's where I'm going to actually start the reading. So the Lord said to Moses, "I will do the very thing that you have asked." For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face. For no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock. And I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my, away my hand and you shall see my back. But my face shall not be sin scene. So this is uh, where we close our reading and first of all there is just this amazing similarity to where the Israelites and Moses found themselves in the mess, in the chaos, in the turmoil um, and this is where we find ourselves. Um, we are in the midst of the pandemic we have uh, hundreds 
uh, thousands of people who have died. We still have people who are sick. We are in the midst of um, upcoming election and you know that division that Moses has done in the camp. We are in the midst of this division as well. And, um, and of course, when you think about our own personal um, lives and the way that we connect with others and ourselves, um, there are ways that we sometimes find ourselves in the mess and we make mistakes and we harm others, we hurt others with our words, um, with our actions. Sometimes we hurt ourselves and neglect and abandon ourselves. Um, and so this is the context this and 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 out like out of nowhere Moses is asking God to show him his glory and i think for Moses it would be his reassurance that God is still with him and with the Israelites that God will still will go with them on the journey however messy or chaotic and then the other thing this this covering this sort of hovering over Moses and the words about mercy I think what it speak to me uh, what speaks to me about this is how God in Christ covers us um, and continues to be with us despite our mess, um, continues to journey, um, continues to extend mercy. And God does not give up on us. And what it seems like God, God had every right to just be so mad at the Israelites but uh, because of the relationship with Moses and this inter interceding, right, intercession that Moses does with God, God chooses to almost like limit God's self and to continue to provide mercy. And so the question that I want to end with this God's glory, you know, we if we read the chapter 34, actually, in... in uh, the book of Exodus, you will see how this scene will play out. Um, but I want to ask you a question. What is God's glory for you? Um, if you were to see God's glory, or if you were to experience God's glory, what it would be? Um, so that's the question that I want to ask you. Um, and the, the message of hope is that God does not give up on us, that God with us in the midst of the struggle, um, in the midst of the mess, and we are not alone. So this is a message of hope for you, and I thank you for joining with me uh, just for a few moments here. I hope you're going to have a blessed weekend, um, and I hope this this short time really focused you on God and remind you of God's mercy and grace. Thanks so much and have a good day. Bye-bye.